Okay, so welcome to um, step one of working in the dark room for the pinhole project. So I've got my red group with me from period one, right? Red, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're coming into the dark room, and the first thing that I want to tell you is when you guys all come in to start working, you want to close that door firmly like that, and then you want to look at this doorknob, you want to make sure and press that lock button on that doorknob so that no one can walk in on you and mess up the work that you're doing. Okay, so as we come over here, in the dark room, uh, we do have the safe light up here, and the safe light is designed to filter out all the dangerous light that would damage the photo paper. Because the photo paper has a layer of silver crystals on it that are sensitive to light. That's how we make photographs. In the black and white dark room, the crystals are silver. And when we expose those crystals to light outside in our camera, the light reflects from our subject back into the camera, and the areas of the photo paper that light hits, reflecting from our subject, those areas are going to change on the photo paper. They change, but we, we don't see the change. When we come back into the dark room with our camera, with the photo paper in it that we have exposed, when we bring that back in here and we take the lid off, pull the paper out and we develop it. So over here in the sink is where we have our, our chemicals that develop the, the image. The first step, the developer is going to make those crystals change from a clear crystal, clear silver to elemental silver, actual silver. So as we know, silver is sort of has gray gray qualities to it, right? Like gray, black qualities. So the more light the crystals have been hit with in here in the camera, the darker they will be. So we will see that image pop up in the very first bath in the developer. But that's the reason that we have to protect our photo paper from white light whenever we are handling the photo paper because any white light that hits that photo paper will darken it. And the only white light we want to hit the photo paper is the light coming from our subject, right? So, so there's no white light allowed in this dark room. No phones, no electronic devices at all, okay? And you want to make sure that door is locked so no one can open it and let white light rush in here, you know, and ruin what you're doing. So when you're in here, you're you're sequestered in here, you're locked in here. Now, um, if anyone needs to get out, you can just walk right out. Like if there was any emergency, you could get right out. Additionally, if there's any emergency, you just open that door and you say, Miss Coffee, you know, you just yell. But, so I don't want you to be nervous about it or anything. Um, but that's how it has to be. Okay, so we've gone over the camera and the basics of what the camera is. So uh, to open your camera lid, you'll just need like a, a scissor or a screwdriver and they are typically laying around in here. Um, here is a tong that it's a metal one that can be used. Does everyone take your lid off? Okay, and what I want to mention now is that the dark room does have two sides to it. We've got a wet side where all the chemicals are, and then we have a dry side which is sort of behind the camera, all these enlargers and everything. And so um, we need to keep those two sides separate. Um, we don't ever want wet things from here to be over here. Um, so you're going to be loading your paper and handling your photo paper, you can handle it and do it uh, in these enlarger stations. You can just work here. You can stand here and load paper. Um, I would not recommend loading paper over here on this counter because water and stuff has been over here. And if your photo paper gets wet stuff on it before you even shoot, it's going to affect your image. It's going to mess it up somehow. So, 
Uh, your photo paper itself is kept in this paper safe here. Can you see this? Okay. All right. Okay. And we're getting ready to load the paper, but let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and pause then. Okay. All right. So here we are at the paper safe. So this this thing has a spring-loaded door, which which really does help to protect the paper from accidentally exposing it to light. So the door pops open and your paper is on the bottom shelf for first hour, middle shelf for second, top shelf for third. And you're going to see, you might see two packets in here. Um, one of them is just going to say period one, period one. This is your main paper pack. There's another pack in here. Can you see this? Yeah. It says exposed needs to be developed. So this packet is for, is for papers that you might get a chance to make a photograph outside, but you run out of class time and you, can't, you don't have time to develop it. So that would go in here for the next day. You'll see what I mean once we get started. I'm going to put this one away. This is the one where you're going to get your photo paper out of to, to start your photography. So, all right, so in here is a black bag. And in the black bag are the fresh sheets of photo paper. So your hands need to be clean before you reach in here. You really need to be in the habit of washing them out there before you walk in here. I forgot to mention that, but that's really important. Because any oil from your fingers that gets on the photo paper will, uh, it will make it so that no image will develop there. You'll see fingerprints. So when I do reach in here, I reach on the edge just to be safe. And now, this is the photo paper. I want to show you it's got a back side. When I bend it to the safe light, the back, there's no uh, reflection at all. It's very flat looking. But this side, you should be able to see a sheen to it. Do you guys see that? Okay, this is the side where the, it's called the emulsion, the silver crystals are. So this is the side that when we load it in the camera, this is the side that's going to face the pinhole. But first, um, first, 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 we're going to put our name on the top edge of the photo paper. So, on the back. So this is the back, top edge. I wrote my name here. You guys need to all do that every time. Here you go. Just fine. And now you can go like over there to do this. Okay, so go over to one of those sections. Go ahead, go ahead. And I'm just going to keep sort of talking, and you'll hear me. Um, here's the photo paper. You can you can pass the paper around. Flexa. You can pass the paper around, but what's really important is whoever is the last person to get a sheet out, you close it back up. Let me show you how to close it. When you close it, I want you to fold it, but then I want you to put it in here, folded side first. See, the folded in goes in first, and that way it goes in real smoothly and easily, very well protected from the light. If you did it the other way, look at what would happen. <laughs> the fold is out, or it might be out and the light can just get right in there if given the opportunity. So fold it in and first. There you go. Okay. Um, let's pause, okay? Okay, so we've got our photo paper uh, with our name on the top edge of the back side. And so we're gonna, we're gonna locate where the pinhole is. And if you look inside your camera, you see a white line on the back wall of your camera, right? You see this white line? So you're going to put it in with the back of the paper facing the back of the camera. And you're just going to bend it like this. Look at what I'm doing. You're just going to sort of gently bend it. Make sure your name is touching the back wall of the camera. And you're going to just slide it down in there. 
you want to center the paper on the white line. You want to try to have it centered because the pinhole is here, so it will project evenly across the paper in the back. Now, it can be loose. When I just put it in there like that, it's loose in there. That's just sort of press it against the back. That's fine. Some people like to press the paper under the rim. They just feel better about that. You can do that too. It's just harder to get it out. But you have to wrinkle it a little on the edges, but that's fine. It doesn't matter to me. So you might feel a little more secure. All right, get that lid on it. And you want to press that lid down all the way around real tight. And make double sure that your shutter flap is over the pinhole. And if you have a rubber band, use the rubber band. Okay, now, um, now once everyone's ready, then we're going to uh, go outside and make an exposure with the camera. Um, I want you to double check that the lids are on, the shutter flap is closed, the paper is put away. All right, so as I go over here, come with me to the door. Before I open this door with dark room work, I always say, okay, is everyone's paper put away? Is everyone ready? And that's what you're going to have to say, because I'm not going to be in here with you. So somebody, whoever's at the door, before you open it, you say, is everyone's paper put away? Is everybody ready? And we are. So, okay, so let's pause. Okay, so here we are, we're outside, and big difference from in the dark room, right? And the sun is really bright, so we're really lucky. So we looked on the back of our camera, and it tells us right on the back how long to expose it for based on how much sun there is. And on a sunny day, it's 40 to 80 seconds. So we're going to expose this morning for one minute. So you need to set your phone, go ahead and pull that out and set your timer uh, for one minute. Now, the thing about pinhole photography is because the shutter speed is so long, there's no way you can photograph while you're holding these cameras. These cameras have to be set down on a steady surface. So if you look over here, I've got a couple of options. I might put, yeah, I could get away with putting it right here. Okay, it's not gonna fall. That might be kind of cool, I might do that. Um, or I could put it on the ground, you could put it on the trash can, you could put it anywhere. Um, so the main guideline, um, if you could pan over and sort of look towards the sun, there's the sun. Okay, come back this way. All right, here's the camera. The subject has got to be over here. So the order of the, order of the, uh, the components here has to be that the camera is in the middle looking at the subject and the sun is behind the camera. That is critical. If we try to reverse this, turn the camera pinhole facing that way, and if I were to get between the camera and the sun, what would happen, guys? What would that picture look like, huh? I wouldn't show up good. Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't show up good. There would be no light on me. I'd be all in shadow. And sometimes that's cool if you want to do that later, but first I want you to learn how to do it right, you know, right, so to speak. So all we do um, is you don't really know what you're going to capture, okay? So you just make sure that pinhole is pointed towards your subject. And um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use Melinda's camera and I'm just going to demonstrate, but I don't have a timepiece. Um, so why don't we, uh, well, yeah, go ahead and can you start me? Tell me when. So look at my camera here. So when she says go, I'm going to pull this off. Go. So I'm pulling off the magnet. I'll just put it on the top, and I'm going to go get in position right in front of the pinhole. And I'm going to hold still. You can pause it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I put the magnet back on, and now all I have to do is take this magnet inside and develop it. Okay? 
So, and that's on the next, that's the next demonstration. So, you'll see what you get. And that's it. It's super fun. Okay, bye.